Dear friends, welcome to the Mindful Maya podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to understanding the phenomenon of the mind and be free from its conditions. The series features various talk shows given by the mystic Maya around the world in what he calls the conversation from the silence to the silence. Oh dear, we all are alone in our paths. Every single person in this world is entirely alone unto themselves. Even though it appears that we are with somebody, we may be with a friend, with a family, or a group of people we don't know, known or unknown, it really does not matter. In the end, we are all entirely alone. The understanding and acceptance of this reality, that we are alone, gives us much internal freedom. The acceptance of knowing the aloneness inside each one of us brings us into a position in an understanding that we are all in the same boat, in the same situation. And in this situation, when we personally realize and identify the aloneness in us, and when we see someone we also know that the person is within themselves entirely alone as well. And if we look at the state of the planets, there is a vast emptiness in this space. And each planet, even though some of them have moons and all the planets have their respective star, but there is always a significant gap in between. And if we move forward and look into the grand picture, the whole solar system is traveling alone in the vastness of the universe. As humans, we have always thought that there may be some other life forms that we can communicate with, but we have never found. There may be, there may not be. And even if there is, those life forms also are entirely alone. This is when we look outwards, outside of our planet. But if we look inside in our planet, the entire amount of people that is alive and living today have their own universes inside their own mind. The intelligence that shows an image and understanding of something is different. Even though the image is same, the understanding and the perception is different for all these people. All of us have to live this way. All of us are bound to live this way. This way that we can only experience anything from our own perceptions. I cannot experience anything as you do and you cannot experience anything than anyone else does. The sweetness of the same sugar is different for each one of us. The experience of the same journey is different for each one of us. And the experience comes from different stories one has lived, from different taggings of the mind under different stories that we have lived. The same incident may appear as something positive or something negative in certain degree to a person and in certain other degree to another person. It really does not matter how close two people are, yet the perception is different. We can be close with one person or more our entire life, but none of us will have experienced the life in the same way that is why we are all unique. We are all made different, slightly different than each other. We appear similar, but there is a great amount of differences that dwells within us and makes us unique. We all have the seeds of desires and attachments within us. We all have the seeds of love, anger, hatred, within us. 
but they play out differently for different person. The base of the phenomenon is the same. The way the mind processes all these things is the same as a formula for being a human or a formula of human species or a formula of the mind of the human species. The phenomenon is the same, but the stories vary among people, among each individual. There are different stories going on at any given moment. If I see a tree, and if you see the same tree at the same time, we have entirely different thoughts coming up. If I see a flower, and if you see the same flower, there are different thoughts and there are different emotions that arises. And this makes us two different antennas or two different receptions of the flower, of the object being watched or the object being listened or the object being touched. All our senses work as these objects to bring us the information. And the mind processes all these information to form a sense of reality around us, a sense of understanding of the reality around us. Yet, we all perceive things differently. If we understand this phenomenon, if we understand this mechanism of how we perceive and how the perception changes among each people in the entire world, it allows us to become free. This understanding helps us accept the reality. If we do not understand the reality, then we may think that something is mine or somebody is mine or I belong to somebody. And this game of pulling and pushing, the stretching of each and other, and the constraints and the tensions, they continue. But if entire population of the world understands this grand reality, that everyone is entirely unique and everyone is entirely alone with their own universe inside themselves, then the sense of peace can arise. The sense of internal bliss can arise. Because if you are completely alone and you have surrendered to that fact that you are completely alone and you have also understood that everybody else is in the same boat of being entirely alone, then only love can arise. Then only sharing can arise then you can completely understand the feeling of being alone. And you can also understand the feeling of being alone that is present in the other person. And this is the nature of the grand consciousness. And that is why it is what we call universe. That it is one. That it is united. That it is functioning in the same order of principles in the same order of the laws that it has been functioning since aeons before our time and will function aeons after our time in the similar manner. Sometimes you may look into the world, you may look into other people and then find yourself lonely. You may see someone else or somebody else having fun, going somewhere, doing something with many other people and you may think that you are the only one that is entirely alone and you may feel sad but this is the starting of a journey within yourself the grand acceptance of this aloneness brings you not only bliss but a relaxation towards life because in the end we all go through the similar phase of life and we all have to leave the life as such and we don't know where we are going after that and we don't know where we came from before life 
yet here we are. Just by realizing tiny details of the life in different dimensions, in different plants, different animals, and just looking at the surrounding around us. It makes our life easier to accept the things that happens around us. And aloneness is the thing that happens around us our entire life. You may be able to bring a person to your home. You may be able to bring a person to your heart. You may be able to have the memories and the experiences of a person with you. But no matter how close you bring a person, you always know that something has not fulfilled, that something is still there that you want more and more. But it does not matter how close you bring a person towards you, the person does not become you. Only you can become yourself. Only you can know how much you want this person or how much you love this person or how much you hate this person. All the experiences happens within you. So the way of bliss is to know these phenomena that is happening inside you. If you feel lonely, it is okay. If you feel sad, it is okay. If you feel filled by love, it is okay. If you find yourself dreaming, it is okay. If you find yourself in different situations and different emotions, it is all right. Because all the emotions and all the dreams and all the desires, we all are built with that. And we all are therefore in the same boat. The way is to understand these different dimensions that goes on moving in a very cyclic manner within ourselves. There is a sense of love within us that arises at some point. There is a sense of anger within us that arises at some point. And all the emotions that you can see that passes through you and they don't stay forever with you. They come, they stay for a while and then they are gone, and then you can see that you are not touched by them. If you were touched by them, you would have always been love, or you would have always been hate, or lust, or anger, and all these emotions, but you are completely untouched by them. They come, they stay, they go, yet you are, yet you always have been, you always have been there, to watch as they come, to witness, to let it come to you and to leave and let go when they leave. And in this way, people come, people go, seasons come, seasons go. Emotions come, emotions go, life comes and life goes. And all of this can be seen if we pay our attention just outside of our place, looking into the nature, looking at small details of the nature, it can be understood. Because as outside, as inside, as above, as below, all follow the same pattern. Just the mere act of watching the winds blowing on the trees, and just watching without forming any thoughts. And if the thoughts are formed, let it be. Because the mind is designed to have thoughts. The baggage of different thoughts and different thoughts that arises in different emotions. This is our mind. And it is all right. It is perfectly doing its job when it brings different thoughts. Yet, if you just watch outside as the wind blows, as the birds fly, as the animals walk around, make sounds. And if you have been watching this way, and if you are living in a place around the year, and if you look out towards these trees, these birds, and if you look at the seasons change and they rotate throughout the year and year and year, and you see the seasons come and go and come and go and come and go. 
And so does emotions come and go, come and go. And so does the thoughts come and go. The thoughts have a shorter cycle. The emotions have slightly longer cycle. The seasons have longer cycle and the life has even longer cycle. So everything is in this cyclic nature. And therefore, the whole life, the whole universe, the existence of the universe even goes through cycles. And that's why it is termed chakra, the cyclic nature of our reality, of our mind. And in all these journeys, the witness or the experiencer is always alone, watching, contemplating whenever things come in and contemplating whenever things go out. Because the witness can only be silent because the witness can only accept and watch. And this is what meditation gradually builds up in a person, the power of witnessing. And witnessing is the key to bliss. And witnessing is the key to understanding the life and letting go of anything that comes in and goes. Because the act of meditation is simply witnessing calmly the phenomenons of the mind. Whatever the mind does, just keep on watching. And it is all right if the mind talks too much. It is all right if the mind shows you different places and different thoughts and dreams and memories. It is all right. It is doing its job perfectly. We have to find a way to befriend our mind and not make the mind our enemy. By fighting with the mind, we make our mind our enemy. And this is where it becomes difficult and difficult to meditate. When we befriend our mind and let it do what it does and understanding that it is perfectly okay that the mind is doing different things, then a sense of calmness, a sense of surrendering, a sense of acceptance towards this reality comes forth. And gradually we become more and more calm and meditation starts happening to us. We may walk around the world with somebody. We may walk around different scenarios with somebody. We may play out different acts with somebody. But the meditation happens entirely for the experiencer, happens entirely for the individual, and shows more and more that you are completely and entirely alone a very powerful being, a very powerful consciousness, a very powerful intelligence at work, that you can experience this entirety entirely alone. And this is the blessing of the meditation, to bring you to an understanding of the grand reality of the existence, that the existence itself is entirely alone and witnessing you as it has created many, many different bodies for the consciousness to grow and understand and realize itself. When you realize yourself, then you have realized the existence or the existence has realized itself from you. Dear friends, we want to publish these life-changing conversations as a book. And for that, we need your help. Please leave your thoughts on our Facebook page, Maya Satsang. And also, share this podcast with your friends. Every thought is valuable and every share counts.